Okay, so let's go now to the modeling phase. So as I said at the beginning, uh, because Advanced Steel is working on the top of AutoCAD, this is exactly the same spirit for creating elements. I can create lines and convert lines to beams. I can create arcs and convert these arcs to curved beams. I can even create polyline and create polylines to polybeams. Okay? So I'm not going to show you that. It's obvious, but it exists. And there are some other possibilities, such as create a polyline, something like that, and convert it automatically to a folded beam. And by the way, you can get it unfolded automatically on drawings and NC files. There are some ways also to create grating. We have a complete catalog of international gratings available in advanced steel. They can be rectangular, they can be circular, they can be polygonal. But when it's a complex shape, you can first create a polyline and convert it to a grating. And we have also some possibilities in advanced steel to have, for example, uh, a rectangle, a circle, and to create a transition, which is a square round transition between the rectangle and the circle. So I'm going to show you some of these possibilities. I'm going to open a different file. Uh, I would like to use this one. So you see, this is uh, the, the section I would like to create. So this is a polyline. It's already a polyline. And in advanced steel, there is a tool to create a folded beam from a polyline. So you just press the icon. And as you may see here in the command line, you have different options. You can start from a polyline. So this is what I'm going to do. But you could start from a circle or from an arc. So let's go for a polyline. P like polyline. And I'm going to pick the polyline. OK? And now I need to say uh, to specify a central point. And I need to say also the length for this folded beam. So I can say I want to create it from this point to this point. And automatically, you see, the folded beam is created. So this is a nice way to create such element. So of course, I can change it like that so that you better see the result. And after, you have access to this dialog box. So you can change anything. You have access to some standard thickness. Uh, you can enter also thickness by yourself. You can specify if you want to have the folded beam inside or outside the polybeam. You can even add some values to get some radius here. You see, uh, I'm not sure if it's possible. It's visible. Yeah, it's visible on the screen. Okay. So you see, you have some numbers: one, two, three, four. And for, the, for example, the number four, which is here, if you want to have a radius like that, you just enter the value and you get a radius automatically. So this is really to create and really easy to modify. And even more, you can go to display type, and you can say, I would like to see it exactly, but with the possibility to modify the section. And now, if I pick it, I have some grips. And it's easy to modify. If you want to stretch it a little bit like that, you can do it easily. OK? Another example with uh, converting a polyline to a grating. So imagine you have a, a platform like that, a circular platform, and I would like to add some grating on the top of this platform. So just to save some time here, you see I created a polyline. This is a polyline, so I'm going to pick it. And in advanced steel, to create some grating, so you have different possibilities which are here. Okay, you can create rectangular standard grating, variable grating, and here you have access to a command to create a grating from a polyline. So I'm just going to pick the command, and automatically, the polyline is converted to a grating. And in the dialog box, I'm going to move that a little bit so that you better see. It's easy to define if you want it on the top of the beam or under the beam. It's easy to define the thickness if you want to change it. And again, you have access to a complete catalog of, uh, catalog of grating. And by the way, in advanced field, there is a possibility to extend or shorten a little bit this grating afterwards. If you use this possibility, shrink or expand polyplate. So you have to pick the plate, OK? And you can enter a value which can be negative or positive. So if I enter, for example, something like 1, it's going to be bigger. And if I enter a negative value, it's going to be smaller. So it's a nice way to change the shape afterwards. Oh, I would like to sh show you the transition also. So let me go back here. So as you can see here, I have a rectangle which is there. 
and I have a circle, and in advance still there is a specific command which is there. You can say I want to start from the contour which is there, okay? I want to select on the other side this circle, and then you get a dialog box. And here you can define the number of facets because it's going to create some facets. For example, 24, you can define the thickness. Do you want to have it outside, inside of this um, contour? Press OK, and you get something like that which is created automatically. And you can get it unfolded also uh, automatically on drawings and on NC files. Okay? So let's continue. Okay, so just a few words about additional possibilities in advanced steel. Sometimes in your project, you need to fabricate a beam, a member, uh, a little bit shorter or a little bit longer than the theoretic value. And we have this possibility in advanced steel to enter what we call a shrink value. And again, this value can be positive or negative. Positive, it will shorten the beam. Negative, it will extend the beam. It does not have any effect in the model. But this value will be taken in consideration for the drawings, for the bill of material, and for the NC files. Another tool, which is great to know also, if you are doing some tubular steel structure, if you create the model like that, and you would like to define a specific gap, but really you would like to define and to enter the exact value you would like to set between the tubes, there is a tool in advanced steel to do that automatically. So I'm going to show you how it works. Okay, so this is just a simple example. You see I have a truss like that, I have some members, I have some diagonals, and here I need to give a, a, a short offset, you see? So in advanced steel, if you go back to the advanced steel tool palette, if you go there, you will find this possibility. There is a beam clearance tool. And what you can do, so we are going to do it for the first diagonal. You need to select the first member, the second member, the third one, and now we have to enter the value. So I can enter two so that it's really visible. And you see it's offset automatically of two. So this is really a great tool to offset elements. And the, the, the other point on the other side stays at the same location. It's only the one I select which is moved. So let's do it again here, selecting this beam, this one, the diagonal, and I'm going to enter two again and you'd see it's done automatically. So, nice tool for structural uh, steel structures. Yes, please. Uh, this, is it created as a truss or is it just individual beams? Oh, for, for, for this exercise, I created, uh, I created that as indi individual elements, yes. But in advanced steel, you have some automatic tools to create joists or trusses. Yeah, there are different tools for that. I'm going to skip this point because I'm late already. <laughs> so just to explain you that in advanced steel, you can create rectangular plate, polygonal plate, and there is a specific command also to create a circular plate, okay? So it's really easy to define. You just enter the diameter, outside diameter, inside diameter, thickness. And if you want to create some balls or some hole, there is a switch which is there, okay? And you can create them along a circle. So you just enter the value for the radius, and then in the dialog, it's easy to change the whole type. So they can be circular, round circular, but they can be slotted also. And this is how you get some slotted round hole on a circular plate. Uh, just quickly on the tool palette, if you click this icon, it opens another tool palette which is specific uh, for building. It's like a building generator. So it, might, it, it may be very useful for people doing uh, commercial buildings, industrial buildings. Uh, I can show you quickly. So on this tool palette, just go uh, there. And if you scroll down, you get this icon, building generator. And you have access to a separate tool palette. Three categories. In the first one, you have all the tools to create a grid. You have the different tools to create portal frame, to create uh, bracing, to create purlins also. In the second category, you have all um, specific connections 
for connecting portal frame, base plates, things like that, uh, bracing also. And in the third category, you have all the tools for creating and connecting purlins and side rails. Now I would like to show you a little bit how you can display uh, a connection, a specific connection, uh, and uh, what are the tools to isolate it from the model. So I'm going to show you that through uh, the model view. In advanced fields, there are some possibilities to create some model views. It can be an elevation view, a top view, but it can be just a view on a specific connection. And then, thanks to AutoCAD possibility, you can display a connection with different viewports. So I can ask for a side view, a front view, and a 3D view of, of the same connection. I'm going to show you how it works. <coughs> so I would like to go back to this model. Let's take this one, for example. So first, I, I would like to display the cuboid of this connection. So with a right click, advanced joint properties, I get access to the dialog box where I can define the connection and all individual elements. And I get the cuboid, which is displayed now. So now what I would like to do is to show you how I can display the Project Explorer. Okay? And there are some possibilities here to create model views. So I just go and say create new model view. I can define a point, for example, or two points. I can specify a grid line and create a view from this grid line. And you have this here the possibility to create a view from a join box. So this is what I'm going to use now. I would like to create a view from this connection. I can give it a name, you see. So it's my AU connection, for example. So just give it a name. And now you get some arrows. And you just need to pick the arrow, which is your view direction, I would say. So maybe I would like to see it like that from the front. So you just pick the arrow and press Enter. And you see it appears here. This is my model view I just created. And now if you want to display it and only it, you just click on the bubble which is there. And now you see only this connection. OK, so it's a nice way to isolate, create your own model view, and display them. And you see the size is as it is. But there are some possibilities to pick the box. And if you want to stretch it a little bit, you see it's easy to do it like that. So you can do it horizontally. You can do it also vertically. It's re really easy to, to, to stretch and to get something smaller or bigger. Also, if you go to View and Viewport Configuration, I have only one viewport at the moment. But you know you can create two vertical viewports. You can create three vertical viewports. So let's go for this one. And here, for example, I can see it like that. Maybe this view, I would like to see it from the back. And maybe this one, I would like to see it from the top. You see, it's easier to see uh, your connection like that. And again, if you want to stretch the box and make it a little bit bigger, it's easy to do it like that. Okay? By the way, you have the possibility to take that and stretch a little bit the viewport if you want to do so. Okay? And now it's easy to make a right click go to the advanced join properties and make some changes. For example, if you want to go to stiffness and instead of both you want none, then you see in all the view you get no stiffness. If you want to get them on the top or bottom or both sides, it's easy to control. Okay? And if you want to go back to a unique a single viewport, just choose a single. And if you want to see everything again, just go back to the Project Explorer and unselect that and everything is back on my screen. OK? Railing macro. Advanced Steel provides automatic tools for stairs and railings. So we have a specific macro for stairs, for railing, for cage later. And what are, so with a lot of possibilities, as you can see in the dialog box. And there are two things I would like to highlight here. You can move the post individually. And you can also change the size of the railing thanks to grip points. So let me show you that quickly. I think I need two hours to show you everything today. <laughs> so I'm going to create some railing here on the top of my platform. So in advanced steel, you can find the railing tool, which is there. So I'm going to pick some beams where I want to create the railing. I'm going to say, sorry, I'm going to say I want to start the railing, for example, from the top of the column. And maybe I would like to, to 
and it here at the middle of the beam, and you see you get a railing which is created automatically. Okay? So I'm going to speed up a little bit, but you see you can access to the post individually, and if you give a distance here, something like five, you see this one is moved of five. If you go to the next one and you say minus two, for example, this one is move of minus two. So it's, it's great because you can control the distance uh, for the post individually. And what I would like to show you also is that you see you have these grips, this grip which is there, which is like a small sphere, and you can take it and you can move it. So if you want to extend your railing to the top of the column, just take the sphere, move it, and the railing is extended automatically. In advanced steel, we have some tools for stairs also. Here, I just would like to mention that uh, you can create stairs, and if you want to move it, you just have to display the cuboid which is there, and for that, you have to, dip to be uh, in a 2D wireframe visual style. <laughs> and now it's easy to move it, it's easy to copy it, and it's a nice way to create some switch stairs also because you can create one of them, copy it, rotate it, move it, and you get something like that quite easily. Now I would like to mention the model browser. The model browser is a nice way to get direct access to object properties. Uh, and this, in this dialog box, you can add some columns like that. You can also remove columns. You can edit properties. So it's an easy way to modify some properties without having to, uh, to go to each element individually. Uh, some tools to help display some parts of the model or to check yourself. We have some tools to display, for example, only a selected assembly. We have some tools to uh, see what these bolts are bolting, for example, or what a weld is welding. And we have some tools to filter. For example, we can find which are the parts which are loose parts in my model. So let me show you quickly how it works. So for example, I'm going to take this column. Okay, I just pick one member of this column. And if I display the tool palette again, here, here you will find the possibility to show only the selected assembly. So I just pick the icon and only the selected assembly is displayed on my screen. So it's a nice way to verify yourself as a column and all welded parts which are shop welded to this column. So you see the base plate, the stiffener and all good set plates. And if you want to redisplay all again, you just press all visible icon and you get all displayed again. Okay? Now, if you want to check what are bolting these bolts, for example, you just need to go there and use this tool. I want to display connected objects by these bolts, and you get the parts in red color. Okay? If you want to remove the red color, just press this one, clear marked object. And if you would like to check something, like, something else, like here, I want to check these bolts, what they are bolting, and it shows me in red color what connects what is connected automatically by these bolts. Okay? Now if you want to display all loose parts, you just need to go there and you have the icon which is there. I want to mark in red color in my model which are the loose parts. Okay, so it tells you. And then you see them in red color. So you see all parts which have no weld at shop, I would say. Okay, so it's an easy tool to find loose parts. Yes. Uh, those loose parts are not the ones that are welded. So yeah. the welded ones? So they, have, they have no weld at shop and no bolt at shop. It's like a purlin, so you just uh, cut it, drill it, and send it for painting. Ah. There is no need to send it for welding to someone in the shop. So it's a way to know that. Okay. 